So I'm. My name is Colin Maliner. I'm I'm a student of the Reliable Software Group at UC Santa Barbara, and I'm doing some security research on Bluetooth and other stuff. And today I'm going to talk about advanced attacks against pocket PC phones. But actually, that's only half of the truth, since we are actually going to talk about MMS-based attacks against pocket PC phones. So, yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So, so we're going to talk about um, So we're going to talk about um, attacking and exploiting pocket PC-based smartphones, um, about vulnerability analysis of smartphones, and applying fuzzing to smartphones. Um, in this particular case, we are looking at the MMS, at MMS, the Multimedia Messaging Service, and of course, we are going to looking at the client side, the user agent side. So basically, we will going to look how to analyze and then how to attack the pocket PC MMS user agent. So first, a small overview about mobile phones, um, state of the art attacks, a little bit of bo about pocket PC, the multimedia messaging service, then f um, vulnerability testing of, of, the MMS, uh, of the multimedia messaging service, and then some nice exploits and how to own MMS user agents and some conclusions, of course. So right now, the, um, the basic um, uh, attacks against mobile phones are either Bluetooth-based attacks, where you just like take control over the phone using some logic errors, where you can like steal phone books or use it to do denial of service attacks. Or you attack third-party applications, do some code injection, some, some denial of service. Or if you go to SMS, MMS, we have these MMS worms for Symbian, which don't really um, utilize um, real vulnerabilities. It's more like, yeah, let's see if the user is actually dumb enough to run this Trojan. And some common examples are the Comvoy or the Mabir worms. And then we have the SMS-based attacks, some format string exploits, which basically can only be used to crash the device. Or the, the Siemens thing, the, some special characters. If you send an SMS with a special character, the phone just freezes. Very, very stupid, not very advanced. So we are going to do advanced attacks. So Pocket PC was exploited about like three years ago. There, there, there was a first talk about DEF CON, I think 11 uh, or, or 12, I don't know. Yeah. So the basic things are, OK, we can attack some third party applications, preferably FTP servers, or we can do um, some attacks against the Bluetooth stack. There's actually a nice, not really public exploit because the I th yeah, Microsoft said, oh, we're not going to fix it. The next version is getting out. So Tim Herman of our group, he wrote this really nice exploit. Then we have some other Bluetooth OBEX-based attacks. Nothing, it's cool, but not, not that, that great. And then we have some denial of service, if I could active sync, or some local attacks, which are kind of stupid against PDAs. But they're there. So quick overview of what is Pocket PC. So Pocket PC is actually just the Windows CE versions used for PDAs and smartphones. Yeah, there are a bunch of architectures supported, but we are actually only interested in ARM. Also, we're not going to do any shell code or things today. Um, yeah, the current version is 5.0, but there are so many 4.2 devices out there. So we're going to look only at 4.2. So that's basically the phones where the devices we are interested in. It's just two examples where we have like GSM, wireless LAN, Bluetooth, infrared in one device. Um, yeah. So these kind of phones are we going to attack. Some quick overview about Windows CE. Um, so we have this. Um, 
Windows CE only has like one virtual address space for the whole, for all applications or all processes, which is divided into this really stupid slot structure. <laughs> um, we have basically a, a 32 um, process limit. And yeah, there's kind of memory protection. So yeah, it's really stupid of us. But we are not going to, <laughs> to look at the real, de real details. We're actually only interested in MMS. So, so it's, the security model is also really cool. There's actually a, it's a single user device, and you can just lock your device. So any, pro and any process can access like everything, which is really cool then, because once you're like execute code, you can just like, oh, let's use Bluetooth. Oh, why not use GSM and call some numbers? Yeah, you can just do anything. Um, so the reason why I'm not going to talk about shell code and stuff um, is because it's pretty well covered by now. Um, so if anybody's like into writing their own exploits, check out these talks and use the stuff I present today to write some nice shell code. So there are some issues like on on Linux or Windows, you have like a command shell. So you actually just want to do one thing. You just connect or exploit a box and run a shell, and then you have access, but not on Pocket PC. So you actually have to write the um, everything you want to do in your shell code. So it's going to be a little bit ugly. And then we have the stupid um, um, slot problem, where we actually have to um, like guess the return, um, the re um, a specific part of the return address every time new. It's kind of annoying. There are some workarounds. I'm gonna show them later, but they're they're well covered in the other talks. So that's the actual thing we're interested in: the multimedia messaging service. Many people. I guess know it either at MMS or as picture messaging in the US. Yeah, since I'm from Europe, we just call it MMS. Um, it's basically just a um, multimedia message exchange system. Um, it's basically built like really audio, video, pictures, text, of course, but you can actually send anything. Yeah, just just some data exchange like email. So like, like email, messages are sent like in a, a store and forward manner, so you actually have a big infrastructure in the back. And of course, you have to pay per message, which is kind of interesting if you try to analyze a system like that, because we don't actually want to spend money. So the architecture, even if it's like a phone thing, it's totally IP-based. So if you're like kind of skilled in all the IP stuff and HTTP, WAP, maybe, yeah, you know to how to mess with MMS. The, the system is basically just like four components, the uh, MMS server, a relay, a gateway, the, pu the push proxy, and the SMS service center. So, the interesting thing. So when the message is uh, sent, of course the client generates the message, and then it's actually just uh, first, a, a VAP push to the VAP gateway, which just translates to HTTP, and it, so it just uploads some stupid file to some web server. That's basically how MMS works. The receiving side is a little bit more interesting because the device somehow needs to know there. Oh, there is a new message waiting for you. So that's just going to happen as a via SMS. So as soon as a new message is waiting for you on the server, you just get an SMS. Um, and then you just go to the server and the same way, just use web over the web gateway, do HTTP and get the message. So the matches is just like, yeah, email. So we have some headers, some bodies. The body is like in my really nice format, especially if it's binary encoded. You can do a lot of nice and funny things with it. By the way, if there are any questions, just rave and get a mic. So they just um, try, um, do binary encoding, of course, to reduce message transfer, uh, message size, which is kind of interesting later. So we have a bunch of messages. There are message ty um, types. They are not too interesting. 
besides the notification message. So just for reference. Um, so what is so the what is the user agent? Of course, it's like the MMS client application. It sends and receives the stuff. It handles, of course, SMS, web push, I, the older IP crap, and of course, it has to render lots of formats: SIML, WML. It's like HTML for MMS, and of course, all the different audio, video, uh, image formats. It's really, it has to do. A, a lot of stuff. So the Pocket PC um, agent, they call it the, the inbox application. And the fun thing, it handles everything, every communication like SMS, MMS, POP3, IMAP. And yeah, and again, for reference, the versions I've been, I was working with are these two. So maybe somebody has like a device like that. Maybe he wants or she wants to switch the device off because maybe I'm going to do a demo later. <laughs> uh, the application binary um, is called Tmail Access. So just if you want to look at your device, that's, that's the application we're going to mess with. So, so now if you want to actually analyze and see and attack the agent, we first, of course, need to know, okay, what kind of inputs does this application have to handle? What are the possible attack vectors? And then we have to look at the infrastructure because all our methods we're sending to the device are going through the infrastructure. The infrastructure could just filter out sanitized parts of the message and maybe filter out like bad stuff we are, going, we are sending. So we're going to have to look at that and then since we not want to pay for message delivery um, while testing, we're going to build our own infrastructure and use that for fuzzing. But yeah, more on this later. So um, basically, there are two different messages which are sent to the device. It's the uh, notification. This is the part that's sent over SMS, which has the information about the new message. And then we have the retrieve conf message. This message is basically the thing, the file you download from the web server with just a normal HTTP webcast. And then we have in the receive conf, of course, we have like a header part and a body part. And the body part is really nice, complex, binary encoded MIME multipart. If you ever looked at a MIME encoding and then just think about how it would look like in binary, yeah, it's fun. So, yeah, the infrastructure. Um, so every time we send a message, the infrastructure or the MMS relay is going to look at the message too and say, "Oh, hmm, what's about that header? Oh, that's that's maybe incorrect." So oh, we're not we're not uh, accepting that for delivery. So in order to actually um, find the vulnerabilities or uh, exploit them, we need to know what kind of, what parts of the message we can actually modify to a certain extent before it gets rejected. So that's what we're going to do. We, um, so we, um, I implemented a kind of fuzzing like testing procedure where we just like modify fields and just record the, the behavior of the, of the MMS relay to see, okay, um, this is acceptable or not. So the message headers are basically sanitized heavily, and it's mostly unusable. But the message body is more interesting anyway, since there are m many more possibilities there. And then I think they don't touch it. So, there. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So if we look closer at the MMS delivery on the phone itself, we see that we get a uh, uh, a VAP push, which is, you can do it over UDP, but they send basically the same message just encapsulated in an SMS. It's sent from, normally from port 9200 to port 9, uh, 2948. Um, these are SMS ports, so in SMS you can also have those port identifiers. Then we have this nice thing on the device called a push router. The push router basically just gets all of our purchase and 
forwards it to the application. So and if we have this VND VAP MMS matcher thing, then the MMS client is going to get it. And so and the, and the real fun thing is the message, the URL, where to receive the actual message. That's just part of the, of the, uh, of the notification. There's really just a URL string like here is the message. Get it from here. And now <laughs> the, <fu> the really bad, bad fuck up of Microsoft. The pocket PC device who have wireless LAN also accept the VAP push message on um, the wireless interface. So as soon as you fire up your wireless interface, I can send you a lot of nice VAP push, uh, pushes. So that's like the, how the notification looks like. So you see at the end the red part. This is just the URL where the message is waiting for you, and then you see the blue part is the VAP push, just some information. Do you see some transaction and the subject? It's all in there. So, what you actually can do, you can just build your sm uh, a small VAP message generator and then just start sending VAP pushes over wireless to your device. And your device will think, oh, there's an MMS waiting for me. And your phone will try to dial up GPRS. And it's, the sound is also very, very annoying. And if you send hundreds of messages, thousands of messages, your phone is going to be very, very slow. And you can do stuff like oh, fill up the MMS inbox with the file system. And you, can, you cannot de do like select all and de just delete the junk message. You have to go through and delete one message by one by one, which is a really, really nice DOS attack. So of course we're going to uh, publish a tool. Uh, also the tool is not, yeah, I, I haven't put it on the website yet. So the, actually the trick is to, for the flooding is to um, make the phone believe each message of course is a new message. And the, the thing is we just have to have a unique transaction ID and content location. So if you look at the slides later, um, with the, uh, the notification printout, you can see what parts you have to modify in order to have a nice, um, small, unique notification message. So, and yeah, if you, <laughs> that could happen to you today if I put the tool online. Um, no, that doesn't work, but so because of some um, of the, the web, since you have to go through the web gateway of the so, uh, of your phone service provider, he is there, of course, um, blocking access, or some of them block access to servers which are not their MMS servers. But yeah, your phone will like try three times per message, so it will try to dial up GPS, try try to do a connection, yeah. So, but yeah, that's just like the small side effect, the small fun we had on the side while doing that. Because actually we're going to, yeah, the, use the UDP stuff for something else. So, we want to find real exploitable bugs in the, in the application. And since, yeah, we don't have the source or anything, we, yeah, we're going to use fuzzing. And fuzzing, probably most of you have heard of it, it's just, you build like semi-valid input and send it to the device and see how it reacts. So the problem, of course, with MMS is, yeah, each message um, will cost you about like 25 cents maybe. So if you want to send like 5,000 messages to do some testing, you have to go pay a lot of money. So we are going to just build us our own MMS infrastructure. It's, yeah, since we only have a a, a, patch, a web server, we have a web gateway, um, so we can just get off the shelf stuff from the internet, um, set up an Apache web server, the web gateway, get um, the MMS message generator, which we're also going to release the, uh, custom, our customized library, but it will take some time. And we do the actual simulation of the MMS infrastructure by using the UDP port. So Microsoft actually gave us a really nice debugging tool with this UDP port, so because now we can 100% simulate the MMS delivery process. 
you just have to change some settings in the MMS client and say, okay, use this IP, like our Apache web server and our web gateway to get messages. So we can generate some messages, put them on the web server, um, yeah, put them on the web server and send the notification. So we basically were just after basic buffer overflow, string length stuff, just some basic testing. And so you just hook up the debugger to the Tmail exe, generate some message, dump it into, dump it into the web server directory, and send the message notification. So the phone will retrieve the message from the web server. Either it does nothing and just looks, it looks funny or maybe it doesn't show anything or maybe uh, it, the Tmail exit will crash and you get some nice exception. So this is a printout of the actual receive conf. It's not complete of course because it's kind of big. So in the beginning we see like the phone numbers and then we have the nice multi-part headers. In the middle there is a text file, and then we have the SML file at the end. So it's just for your reference. So, of course, um, yeah. The simulated infrastructure really, really helps because the ISP infrastructures are really undeterministic. Sometimes the messages are not delivered promptly. So the, the, uh, the simulated infrastructure really helps to do deterministic testing. Also maybe we want to test the parts that are normally sanitized. So we can, with our infrastructure, we don't have this whole sanitization thing. We just generate files and feed them to the phone. And of course, um, GPRS is kind of slow. Maybe if you have edge, but still the whole, the whole thing is kind of slow. And with, the with our own infrastructure, we can really speed up the process. Um, and of course, we don't have to pay our whatever 25 cents a buck or however, how much the, infra uh, the provider is going to charge us. So that's really nice and makes the whole testing really relaxed so you don't have to think about spending money for stupid messages. So, and then, yeah. Well, the first box we found in the notification um, indicate in the notification message, and there are just like three stupid buffer overflows. So if you just ma make the transaction ID like 264 bytes, the MMS client just like dies. So and if you remember, <laughs> you can send this message over UDP. So as soon as the the wireless is up, you just go out and send uh, a nicely modified notification message and you can crash TMLX. Unfortunately, all these overflows are not um, re exploitable for code injection. You can just override parts of the stack and the application just goes away. Uh, so the bad thing is, okay, you see my, oh yeah, when I, do, when I want to like write SM MMS, I don't need to be on the wireless, but since the application is also handling um, emails, so maybe you want to check your email, and at that point, we just fire. And so anytime your wireless interface is up, you cannot read emails, SMS, MMS, a really nice one. Then we have some other bugs in the mretrieve config. That's, yeah, they're not so interesting. So uh, in the in the body, um, this is basically the same bugs, but um, for some stuff we cannot um, uh, we cannot exploit it because we have the stupid sanitization. So what we could do, this is just what we could do. We we actually haven't tried it, and because many. Um, Mobile uh, mobile phone service providers actually like run these stupid closed web gateways, which don't allow us to connect to our own um, uh, rogue web uh, MMS server. But if you find an ISP which doesn't block access to other IPs, you can just run your own MMS server on their network or on just on the internet, and send a nice SMS which points to your server. So and 
oops, you can exploit all the other bugs you just found which were normally not exploitable. So maybe you want to try some, uh, try to test some other service providers. I, I just did like this, the big in the US and in Germany and they're smart enough to um, perm uh, deny this access to other um, um, MMS servers. But yeah, maybe you find something and whoops. So now it gets interesting. We have um, the SIML, is this XML based presentation language, basically the HTML for MMS. And the really cool thing about that is, this is of course transported in the message body. So um, ev everything we put in the message body, as I said before, is not sanitized. So, whoa, that's a perfect attack vector. Maybe we find something there and really screw you. So that's basically how a file like this looks like. It just looks like HTML. The green and the red region is going to be interesting because, yeah, uh, there are some exploits. Actually, there are, uh, there are, the implementation is that bad that for these, they just copy the stuff within the double quotes to the stack. So if you put like 600 bytes there, uh, uh, 800 bytes, whoops, just on the stack. We don't care about the size. So it's probably the same parser which just operates on different tags. So yeah, so maybe this is a nice exploit, but so how we've, in order to actually send our own bad, uh, bad MMS, we first need to build our own MMS user agent. And since we know how MMS actually works, this is going to be quite easy. So um, we basically use a, a MMS lib to, to generate some MMS thing, use I use a, a st really stupid Java library to just handle the web stuff since yeah, I didn't really care about re-implementing the shit. And then we, we, uh, you have, of course have to use uh, GPRS dial-up in order to connect to your service provider because the MMS really, of course, is not reachable from the internet. That would be so stupid. Um, or, some, of course, sometimes the, the whole infrastructure is just in a private IP range, so it's not connectable by the internet anyway. So building a MMS user agent is actually quite easy, and yeah. We so yeah, the zero day, we can actually use this exploit from before, uh, the the vulnerability to just yeah ta do some remote code injection over M MMS, and not like the other MMS things where you just have to like install and yeah I don't. It's okay that the application is not trusted. You just click on it like on an email, and as soon as the viewer go, goes in action, bang, code executed. So yeah, there is some. So on the left side, of course, it's just like the, the inbox. And yeah, if you click on that little message, whoops. Yeah, so. Maybe you, somebody wants to try this at home. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, I, I, I use these two devices. I, I really don't know if how many devices are affected. Um, but yeah, if you want to try this, there are the return addresses, the stack size, and so the, sl the slot problem I mentioned in the beginning is it's actually really, really stupid. Um, so you actually have to guess on which slot, memory slot, uh, the t mail is g going to be executed. And what I found is like 14, 16, 20, 24, of course, hex um, are the common slots. So basically what you do is just not send one, uh, one malicious MMS, you just send four, and maybe the user is stupid enough to <laughs> try to execute all four and at some point. <laughs> we will have him. So, yeah, have some fun with that. Oh, woo. I'm f way too fast. So, of course, we have t I've talked to Microsoft and the company X who doesn't want to have his name mentioned, but actually the name is on the slides I submitted because they responded like very slow in the beginning. So, they really showed that they took it seriously because, yeah, one of their VPs, of course, the marketing people, since they don't have one single security guy in the company, 
<laughs> he was like, whoa, we can't do that, can't really, you can't publish that. And a pair, but in the end, they were actually very slow, it's uh, very fast, sorry. <laughs> So um, in about a week, they actually managed to bring out a fix, and the fix is now sitting at the OEMs because they need to be tested and approved because, before they can be released. So as far as I know, they haven't been released. So you have, I guess, maybe a week or two to exploit this. But yeah, do it with your own devices, not with your owned devices. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, so some defense stuff, oh, I'm really, really fast. Um, of course, you could like, just run um, a packet filter on your, uh, on your pocket PC. I actually haven't tried that because I was way too lazy. And um, for, the MMS uh, for the MMS stuff itself, um, the ISP, of course, could run like an IDS or some antivirus thing, which I already do. But yeah, I've, I, ca I didn't have a problem getting messages delivered over four different ISPs. So I guess I don't do any kind of detection until now. Of course, you can also run like some IDS or antivirus on your phone. Yeah, but yeah, I guess today is the first day they know about this, so yeah. So yeah, and yeah, what, what mobile phone providers actually should do is they should actually filter this notifi uh, SMS notifications of over SMS, since actually nobody else besides them should be sending these notifications because you also can crash the application over a real SMS. And yeah, of course, install firmware updates when available or soft updates. So. Oh. So the problem, yeah, security testing for smartphones is like really, really painful because you have this infrastructure, you have, you don't have source code, and in some cases, yeah, if you're sec if you're like doing the security engineering side, then you oh hmm, the MMS user agent is actually is talking to everything like to the GPRS mobile phone network and to Wi-Fi, so you really have to be careful what you're doing. So we found about like 10 exploits. We actually stopped searching after we found stuff we could use for code execution. We will, of course, post a nice advisory on the list. Yeah, and yeah, we did the first code uh, injection against some, uh, against mobile smartphones and yeah, there will be a major, major problem in the future if the companies don't watch out of, uh, about that. So, let me see, oh yeah. So it was really too fast. Um, yeah, so in the future we, uh, of course we have to look at other MMS implementations and like there is a Symbian Palmer stuff, the new Linux phones, we haven't really looked at that stuff. Um, and then of course the other, all the other parts of the MMS message, we haven't looked at the audio, video, um, have parsers and handlers, so, so many things to test. And then of course we could also attack the actual MMS infrastructure. There are so many different protocols in there, you can really, really mess it up. So, um, yeah, I was really too fast. So we have a lot of time for questions. If anybody, go ahead, take, like, take the mic. And so I guess we can, I have time if, are people here with like pocket PC phones? <laughs> so we can do some demo. If you have wireless on, I can do that. Which, Huh? Is it on? How off does the phone have to be? Like the like airplane mode and Wi-Fi off? Oh, you, for, for the Wi-Fi stuff, of course, you just turn off Wi-Fi and then 
you're secure against the Wi-Fi based stuff. But for the MMS stuff, yeah, you have to not read MMS. That's the only thing. So just leave it in airplane mode? Yeah, but then your phone is like off and not usable. So you should basically use a PDA maybe. Um, when you were testing and you found that all the major carriers uh, prevented the client from connecting to a rogue server, um, did you try running a server like on, uh, on a device that's actually on their network, like a, a cell phone? or? Yeah, we, we, tried, um, we tried that, but not with all providers, with some. And yeah, I guess the, the European and the US providers are really up to date with their MMS stuff. But I, f I found uh, in, the, in the MMS actually developer forums online, they give you so much nice information and people are like, oh yeah, I think like in the former Eastern Bloc countries, I think some, the, some providers still just run totally open networks. But apparently the, the German and US stuff there was open I think until two years ago because I saw posts where people were just, oh, I want to play with MMS and people are just like reconfigure the MMS server. Just go ahead. So how about the future? Uh, what about 5.0? Is it super secure? Because uh, I have a personal, um, this kind of hits me personally, because I do have a 5.0 phone, but no, wireless is not on. <laughs> so yeah, I only, yeah. So I, also, I never actually had like a 5.0 phone, but a friend told me that uh, apparently 5.0 is completely compiled with stack protection. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Some, some people looked at it and they saw there is no way in. So I, I haven't looked at it. I cannot say anything. But you should be able to at least cra um, be able to crash the application over UDP. How, since how, the how is that possible? Because the exploit is based on MMS. I mean, does it... Does 5.0 somehow look at the header as well as the, the body? Uh, no, no. so um, if you, yeah, stack protection just like checks that if you overwrite the stack, um, the function address doesn't, the function doesn't return, so your code is not executed. So it basically just gets um, converted to a DOS attack, which is kind of stupid over MMS since you actually have to pay for it. But the UDP attacks should still work, yeah. I, yeah, I really haven't tested anything about 5.0, so. Maybe I can get a 5.0 device and look at it. Preferably not mine. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, the fuzzer you used, did you write that yourself or did you use another application? And if you wrote it, will you be releasing it? Uh, what, what application? Uh, the, fuzz, the fuzzer you used. Um, yeah, we will, that will take some more time mm -hmm. since it's actually a university project and we have like a scientific paper on it so we keep it until then but it's going to be released this year the other application the the dos tools everyone can try it out will be released later as soon as i get off stage i will try to put it online yeah. together so with the updated slides and one other quick question are there other services that you're attacking or is it just mms that you're We're interested just, in just looking at mms okay Anybody else? I guess I still have like 10 minutes or something. Hmm? No, no dance. Um, so any volunteers for like putting up their, <laughs> firing up their wireless? No, not on stage. <laughs> So no, no volunteers, or I actually thought like people were like screaming to like volunteer for stuff. Normally people always want to volunteer and like, oh yeah, I want to do the, the thing with the guy on stage, but not it's your phone, huh? <laughs> Please use a mic. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm like totally under time. Oh, the, another question? Yeah. Thanks, so I can, don't get in trouble with the DEF CON crew. I, I was just saying, um, could you expand a little bit more on the SMS ports thing? Um, is that, th that's in standard SMS messages, that there's like a port field or something? Yes, or? exactly. But like the, the attacks over SMS itself, that's 
not as interesting because you actually have to pay for it. Yeah. So the thing is, the SMS ports are, so the whole port thing for the web posts are just mirrored one-to-one -one between SMS and UDP. So it's basically, yeah, they just map it to the same port so you can send it over UDP and uh, according to the Microsoft security guy, we're just following the standards. <laughs> I volunteer my phone for a demo. For two? <laughs> no. Just just hook it up to the DEF CON network and I will do the same. Uh, I have to, just have to hook up my laptop to the DEF CON network. <laughs> and yeah, I don't need your IP since Microsoft accepts actually messages sent to the broadcast address. So you don't have to <laughs> search stuff. <laughs> so you actually don't have to search, you just like, yeah. I have a question while you're thinking about that. Do you have any idea why Microsoft allowed the UDP uh, notification messages? Like, do you, do you have any thoughts about what their uh, reasoning might have been? Because, because they're just following the standards. Okay. <laughs> That's what, that what I was told. I'm not going to. Oh, you have five hours? Let's see. So is, is your device on? You don't see anything on my laptop. <laughs> yeah, it'll give me the IP for now. Do you get anything? Still nothing? Oh, bummer. Anybody with a 4-2 device? Okay, so I guess I guess that's it, five minutes early, but... <laughs>